Jersey, y'all. We going to Puerto Rico. Steve Harvey and Wendy Williams in Puerto Rico at the same time. Something got to jump off. From 107.5. All right. W. How you doing? It's the Wendy Williams Experience here on WBLS 107.5. Special shout out to my friends up in Harlem at Ounce by Ounce. Love your hair. <laughs> they got that thing on a smash, Ounce by Ounce. They weft it up in the back and sew it up on your head and wash your natural hair in the front. One stop shopping. Love that. Wow. Let's go to line number one. Charles is in New Jersey. He wants advice on his relationship. Hi, Charles. How you how you doing, Wendy? Fine, thanks, Charles. How are you? Good. Or should I say, how you doing? Okay. All right. <laughs> Wendy, listen, I have a problem. Okay. Uh, I need some advice. Mm -hmm. Wendy, uh, I've been going out with my girlfriend for two years. I love her to death. Um, I cheated on her mm -hmm. one time, but ever since then, she hasn't been giving any, giving me any sex. Um, I just loud. don't know what to do. What I mean, we talked about it. I explained to her that, you know, it's a natural thing, you know, that I needed. Yeah. Um, How come you know, cheated? Was it because the other woman was just there because the opportunity was right or because of the lack of sex from your relationship with your girlfriend? Oh, well, Wendy, it was the beginning of relationship mm -hmm. and temptation was high. Yeah. And so I decided... You know, if I do it, I probably won't get caught, but I end up getting yeah. caught anyway. Well, here's the thing you need to explain, because, you know, you cheating was absolutely dead wrong. But it kills me when women withhold sex and really think that that's going to fix the problem. You All know, right. um, you know, if what she needs is a plethora of STD tests because you were out there for a moment cheating, whether it was one time or whether it was a hundred times, you know what I mean? Right. You right. were cheating. If what you all need to do is hold each other's hands and go get your STD tests all over again and be sure that you're clear, then fine. What you might want to do... Now, we still didn't get what... What, when you were having sex with your with your girlfriend, was it enough sex for you, Charles? Yes, uh, the sex was great. You were just you know? being greedy. Uh, basically, yes, Wendy. Yes, and so now we're dealing. What that what was that like a year and a half ago that you cheated on her? You said it was in the beginning. Yes, it was about a year and a half ago. Okay. And the, the sex has been lacking ever since. Like I basically see now. This, now's the time to cheat, and I'm not a cheat, but now's the time to cheat. You know what you need to do? You need to what? tell her. Why you cheated, let her know that her holding back is only driving you to contemplate cheating again and that perhaps this relationship needs to be over anyway. I can't, right. I can't believe that you're still dealing with this. Well, I, I love her, Wendy, and I, I, I love has an, uh, a big effect on things, you okay. know? Okay, then, then, then what you need to do is... Go get your STD test with this lovely woman that you love. She's wife material. You're 30 years old. You're looking for a wife, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. She's definitely wife material. You need to tell her all this, Charles. And you need to muster up as much humbleness regarding this situation as you possibly can. And then, not only that, you need to get it out of your system. And she needs to leave that 18 months ago when you cheated. Back there. Because... It, all right, it, right. It, Wendy, I, I want to thank you. Wendy, can I give a quick shout-out? Go ahead, Charles. Okay, I'd like to give a shout-out to my boys in South River. This is Big Chop talking. I'd like to give a shout-out to Big my girl, Chop. Kim Reynolds. That's who I was just talking about. And, and to you guys up there, Wendy. I love you Thank guys. you, Charles. Thank you. All right. See, because here's my thing. And you know, I done been a woman scorned and whatnot. But you know what? If you're going to choose to stay with somebody, then you will not bring up what the hell happened back then in my face every time we go at it. You're going to stick to the damn topic of why it is that you leave your drawers on the floor and you're not going to throw into it drawers with the the next man's semen in them. You, you, you see what I'm saying? I cheated two years ago. Why are we still dealing with this? Can we move on? We're talking about you burnt the food again or you overspent the mortgage money again. We're not talking about cheating. In my opinion, that's what grown people do when they choose to stay in relationship after being hurt in such a bad way. Now, it's only human nature for you to wonder every time she comes in the door, was she with the next man? It is 11 o'clock at night and H&M uh, closed at 9 and she came in with no bags. So what the hell? She been? That's only natural. But guess what, Duke? Keep that to yourself. 
Keep that to yourself. She doesn't want to hear that crap from you. It's been two years since she cheated. Grow up. And start giving up the sex again. This whole thing with withholding sex, like you're punishing somebody. Dude, you're only chasing her to the next man faster. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like cheating is like the absolute worst. But if you're going to stay, you got to learn how to get over it. I didn't say forget it. I didn't say trust like you used to. Hell no, you better never trust like you used to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be caught out there with nothing. But you know what? Grow up. Grow up. Sex is just sex. Dude loves her like wife material. Bitch, get over it. Get over it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Get over it. She's withholding sex for 18 months. I would have been up in something new. After breaking up with her, of course. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What the hell is that? And I'm a woman talking. I need it. Now. And I need you to act like you want to give it to me, not like I'm raping you for it. I admit I was greedy. I admit I thought I could get away with something. You living, baby, I love you. Wifey boo boo material. You heard Charles. You know, he can kick the game, Charles. You know, lay it down and get your sex tonight. Or leave her before kickoff on Sunday. She can't get over it. Imagine how, if you get married, how the hell long she's going to be dragging out the other fights. I cannot stand a fight dragger out her. Stick to topic. Let's fight about this. Don't bring all this other kind of crap in here. Ladies, I'm sorry if I'm making us look bad right now. But sometimes it's us doing it to men too. We cheat too. Nick, get over it. I wanted something new that was two years ago. Stick to topic. We're talking about the grass needs to be cut. Not me looking at them standing outside cutting it. That's not my type. As long as you're asking, why do you keep bringing that up? I got a flat tire on the way home from H&M, okay? And since you cheated on me, I learned, even though I chose to stay with you since you want to talk about cheating, I learned to change my own damn flat tire so I'd never have to rely on you for crucial things again in my life. So I pulled over to the side of the road and changed my own tire without trying to break a nail because I got a 9 a.m. board meeting tomorrow morning. So if you want to know where I was, I was on the side of Route 3 changing my damn tire. Put that where? Back there. Now take off your clothes and let's have some sex. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, I'm just saying, people are just so lame with the whole, you know, oh, my God. I can't peace believe people still withhold sex. I can't believe people still hold, withhold sex. Like, what the hell is that? I can't believe people still stay with people that withhold sex. Ow. Ugh, please. Is there anybody new on the phone? Sorry, you guys. Uh, I really don't know what it is. There was no full moon last night, and I'm not in the. I'm not down for the period until like the 20s, 21, 22, 23. I don't know why. Hi. Hey, Wendy. How are you? I'm good. Good. I just agree with the um, advice you just gave about to that caller. Okay. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, you, you shouldn't withhold sex, and if your man cheated, I mean, get over it. But uh-huh. if I'm gonna stay with you, you gotta give me my time to you know, adjust to what just happened Absolutely. and let me move on. Yeah. You know, I, I used to pop the coochie like a rubber band for you. Right. It wasn't good enough for you. So right. you went out there and got more. Now but you see, expect me to get over see, it and he, pop it again? But he, see, here, crazy? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think that there should be a time of, and, and only you could determine what that time of actual suffering that the whole couple experiences. Exactly. Only After, I could determine that. And if he's going to suffer, let him wait. He cheated. He had the option uh-uh, to go. Uh-uh. But he could you're, wait you're until I'm good and ready. It's been two damn years. Two, Deal it, with it, it, it in should, therapy. Deal Wendy, with it within your own mind. <laughs> Wendy, it could have been 10 years. I don't care. I'm not waiting 10 years up. for you to get out. 
I don't want it that bad. I can get it from the next chick, and she's not popping masks. Hey, it ain't going to be this coochie right here. Okay, well. I'll tell you that. You say, if it's so easy for me to get somebody else, then go. So here you tell it, and guess what? It is easy to get somebody else, but I want you, baby. Yeah, so I want, wait. I you want you, baby. Wait till I'm over it. You now, I'm, wait. Take, I'm, I'm taking this Babs Bunny video, whoever that bitch, with the, with the injections. That are, I'm taking this to the next room. I'm going to beat my, until it hurts. Well, let him do what he got to do. When I find out that he goes, he want to be with me, he got to wait. I'm not going to just pop it back open like that. You was getting it. You good. don't you have to pop it back loving. open, but it's been six, it's been eight months. He lucky it ain't been eight years. You know, lucky it ain't been you know what? Then we're at an impasse. Okay, we're at an impasse. <laughs> Do you want a divorce or what? No, I don't want a divorce. Well, I'm not staying in a sexless marriage. Then he could go. Then he could go. Just like he went out there. Because right now, while you waiting, I'm out there popping my coochie uh, like a rope. Good. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. How are we going to divide this up? What are we going to do? I, there's nothing to do. He just got to wait. Wow. He just got to wow. wait. Yes, world. Yeah. Wow. He got to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be waiting right over here in Puerto Rico on Wendy's um, trip. Girl, you can't give me no passes. Nah, girl. <laughs> Bye. I'm just saying, you know. Oh, stop with the signs, Goose. Okay, L.A. weight loss. Jeez, I think I lost about 15 pounds in that fight. <coughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't spit. I swallowed it back. One eight hundred four four eight trans. L.A. weight loss. One eight hundred four four eight T R I M. You're gonna love L.A. weight loss, boy. They don't boss you around, make you go to the gym. They don't tell you you have to weigh your food, and measure stuff. They don't tell you you can't eat pizza and all the kind of stuff that made you fat to begin with. They just teach you how to eat in moderation. Everything is not for every day, every time of the day. L.A. weight loss. I'm a foodie. You're a foodie. I'm a foodie. I'm back on L.A. weight loss. When last I checked, I lost six pounds. I'm only looking to lose another 10 more on top of the 15 that I lost almost two years ago on L.A. weight loss. I managed to keep it off because we're going to Puerto Rico. Excuse me. 1-800-448-TRIM. Find out about L.A. weight loss. Find out what millions of people lose. Find out how it's safe, it's healthy, and it's affordable. Find out why it is the doctors recommend L.A. weight loss ad nauseum, if you will, to their overweight patients who want to lose weight. Find out the easiest way for you to lose 75 pounds, 100 pounds, 25 pounds, 10 pounds. L.A. weight loss. Find out about L.A. weight loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's 1-800-448-TRIM. Nice, easy number. And I wanted to talk to you real quick about St. Ives 24-hour moisturizer. It's good. It's affordable. Why not? St. Ives. Not only that, but St. Ives, well, they're proud sponsors of the U.S. ski team and the snowboard team. Imagine what their skin goes through. Exactly. This 24-hour moisturizer is exactly what it says. It's not greasy. It works its way into your skin. You don't have to go and lotion up all the damn time. It's St. Ives 24-hour moisturizer. And it's available at Dwayne Reed and just just regular places. You don't have to go to the booth, to the back, to the corner, to the dark and wait for the delivery and pay all this money. These people, they promise all this fancy stuff. You're paying $90 for moisturizer? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? St. Ives 24-Hour Moisturizer retains the moisture all day. There's no need for application. It absorbs fast and it's not greasy. Leaves your skin soft for the next man. <laughs> St. Ives. And I'm out. A difference you can see. Said I got right in jail. Bitch, that's real big. It's a payback. Get your gas. When you win, and I'm breaking back. Jump on the next. Down your throat. Anybody ever see Wendy Williams' fat ass? I'm about to put a $20,000 hit through Jenny Craig to come find your ass and put you in a fat farm. Now I'm like, I'm all Westside. It's Tupac, so you know what I'm saying. Experience. Wow. Experience. Wow. Experience. Experience. Wow. Experience. Wow. Experience. Wow. Oh boy. Um, Sugar says, "How you doing, Wendy? What the hell is wrong with you today? You're crazy." Yeah. Well, ticky ticky boom. 
So, Gerald Levert's about to unveil his wine collection in 2007. It's a Chardonnay Merlot. And he says that he's allocating a portion for his daughter's scholarship, excuse me, his co- her college fund. And he's calling one of the bottles Carly's. Okay. Jam Master J, um, his 41st birthday is um, upon us. And Sticky Fingers and a Canadian music personality um, have done a series of public service announcements. <sighs> when is his actual birthday? It's coming up in, is it in March or February? I don't know his actual birthday. Jeez. I don't know when it is. I can tell you one thing. Hit the music. Because it's very, very sad. A witness who attended the January 13th funeral of Lou Rawls has the exclusive drama that went on between uh, between his widow Nina, who's 50, or, excuse me, 35, and his middle daughter Luanna. I forgot to ask Bobby Brown about Luanna Rawls. <laughs> that was way before Whitney, though. Anyway. They say that Nina, the widow, invited Luana to the funeral, but a friend of Lou's says that Nina refused once she got to the funeral to allow Luana to see her father at the funeral home. She said if Luana wanted to go, she could go with the public like everyone else. Wow. In the meantime, Nina said that, you know, she had filed a complete uh, a police re- complaint against Luana. Nina is claiming that Luana took all of her father's jewelry, including his wedding ring, his Grammys, his gold plaques, and his albums. And a close friend of Luana's said that Lou instructed his road manager to remove those things from his Arizona home in a notarized letter. Luana wasn't trying to get his money. She was... she. Never wanted anything like that. She grew up the daughter of Lou. She grew up privileged, for Christ's sakes. At this point, Luana wants to get the money because she doesn't want it to go to the widow, Nina. Actually, Luana told her father, prior to his death, death, give it all to UNICEF if you want to. Excuse me, United Negro College Fund, the UNCF, if you want to. But don't let her have the money, Daddy, because of what she's done to you. So sources say that Lou Rawls heard a tape of Nina's phone message to Luana prior to him passing and that the message made him realize, whoa, wait a minute. Who is this witch that I'm married to? Well, she doesn't love me one bit. She's a user. I got to do something. So three days before he died, Nina brought several lawyers to the hospital room. That's the that's the um, widow and had him sign papers retracting everything. But he wasn't in his right mind. He wasn't competent to do that. And he was it was under duress. So now Nina gets everything. You see, because prior to his divorce, he was trying to have the whole marriage annulled. He never got to the point of the annulling. Three days before he died, Nina got wind of, you know, all this annulment talk, brought her gangster lawyers to the hospital room and tried to get him to sign something, you know, saying that everything. Anyway, it's crazy. Three days before. So in the meantime, you want to know how they met? Well, they say that Nina met Lou five years ago when she was a flight attendant for Continental. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But I'm just saying, boy, what a captive audience you have. Coffee, tea, or me? <laughs> Say. Lou was arrested and uh, in released on domestic violence charges back in 2003. The charges were eventually dropped. They ended up marrying New Year's Day of 2004, um, right after he was diagnosed with cancer. Boy, isn't that perfect. Marry him, barely any sex. You know, he's all sick and pilled up. You know, out of touch. I can be out here hot and popping, you know, getting my 35-year-old on. So, if you ask why Nina seemed to have such a hold on Lou, a source says, she was a 33-year-old girl. He was a 68-year-old man with cancer. You just don't know what emotionally a man at that age is thinking. Or what he was looking for. She could have had something on him. Maybe from the d- domestic violence thing. Hmm. Ain't no good. 
Ain't no good gonna come to you, Nina, until you come on the experience and come clean. Well, I mean, you know, it's kind of like the Anna Nicole Smith syndrome, I guess, sort of, except we're dealing with less money. I think it's pretty cool that that um, the daughter is not fighting for money. She said, just give it to UNICEF, anything, but let it go to her. I love that. I love that talk. And by the way, the child that they have together, because, you know, Nina and Lou went on to have a child. And by the way, she was, they say that, that she was um, in very bad shape when they got married. Um, but, you know, even though she had a job and everything like that, you know, they, she, in other words, she got with him and she got brought up. And the child that they have together or they had together is adopted. So now you can see perhaps where Luann and the rest of the kids are like, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> you know, the baby's only one of those widow, 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 witty, bitty, you know, like less than a, you know, like, like a widow, 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 moo, moo, moo. Like, like maybe when Lou is pilled up and she forced his hand on the papers or, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just talking to you, my friends. <laughs> We can go to the phone for a couple of more um, minutes. <clears throat> That's too bad about Lou Rawls, Hello. though. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Um, I'm calling about advice. Okay. Okay. I need advice on um, my relationship. Oh. Okay. What's going on? How old are you? I'm 25. Mm -hmm. He's 25. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've been together for over a year now. Mm -hmm. And he's been around 24 um, we spend around 24 hours together, like we work together, we're always together. Wow. Uh-huh, and around Christmas, he found out that his ex had a baby, and they took the test, and it's his. Okay. And the baby's about 10 months now, mm -hmm. and I'm having a real hard time, like, dealing with this. Mm -hmm. I want to know if you had any advice on how to get over this, how to work things out, if possible, or anything like that. And have you been with him for a year? Yeah, a little over a year. I'd leave him. Unfortunately, you're wrecking your work life and all like that. <clears throat> yeah. Why should a young, pretty girl like you have to deal with him adjusting to being a new father? Goodness only knows what type of intimacy they share, whether it be words or physical, when he goes over to see this baby. Why do you need this headache? Why, like, why do you need this? Why do you even need the headache, as such a young girl, of even being on the telephone asking about a relationship like you're a grown woman? I know when I mean, you have fun. feelings are involved. I understand. Know. Well, if you can't adjust to him having this baby, then I would suggest leaving the relationship. You're right. He's got no extra money for you. No. He's got no money to take you to Puerto Rico. No. Because it all goes to the baby. Yes, no. A young girl like you, all attractive and smart, you deserve better. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm just saying you deserve better. Yeah, because he's such a sweetheart, but this is like the one thing that I can't get over, Wendy. Listen, you're like me. I wouldn't have been able to get over that either. I would have moved on. Yeah. Would yeah. All right. I wish you well. Thank you, Wendy. You take care, honey. I love you like a big sis. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, mommy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, um, mommy. Wait, is the Mama Sita the older one or the younger one? Mama Sita. Mama Sita? Bye-bye, Mama Sita. Bye-bye, my little bambino. I love you guys for listening today. Thank you so much to them franchise boys for coming through and showing the love to the show. Um, and, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys listening today as well. Um, God willing, we'll all be get uh, together again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. He's part of the evil. <laughs> See you later. Because I'm saying bye-bye. Good night. Program complete. Like life hands you, you know, enough crap. You know, she's 25. That's a, that's a good age to be. But the kid is only 10 months old. It would be different if she was 25 and the boy was, or the, the child was three. He's had three years to get his grown man on, to be a responsible father, to redefine the relationship with the ex-girlfriend. You, you know what I'm saying? It's just it's all too much. And unfortunately, they work together. So it's going to be ugly in her personal life. And it's going to be ugly at home. But these are the things that happen when we deal with people, you know, on the job. And they say that the job is one of the best places to meet people these days. I agree with that. But I also wholeheartedly agree that one of you has got to be way mature than the other, which very rarely happens. 
Otherwise, it becomes very sloppy and unprofessional at work. And if I was the boss, I'd fire both of you. You're not bringing that crap up in here again. You know what I mean? <laughs> Guess that's why I'm not the boss. <laughs> I tell the interns as soon as they start here, I don't want no nothing going on with no, but I don't want the Monday boys talking to the Wednesday girls. Yeah, we got boys and girls now. You know, not just gay, but, you know, hetero, you know, so it's a, it's a thing going on. And I've already told them, now, what, what they do is what they do. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to even detect it. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Everybody focus. <laughs> All right, look, um, the bonus hour is coming up next. I would just, you know what, in actuality, I'd love to do, you know, gossip, but I would like to talk with you on the telephone. If you want to call about anything, it could be uh, remembering Coretta Scott King. It could be talking about them franchise boys who were up here earlier. A lot of you all have a lot to say about, you know, that down south um, accent. Um, the people poll question, do you think Isaiah Thomas sexually harassed the woman? You know, let's let's talk about Nix Marie and the new case in the in the child welfare system here in New York and how that the system is failing us. Or maybe we as parents are failing our kids. I, you know, maybe we as men and women are failing f from from the inception of choosing who the hell we're going to sleep with with no condom. I mean, you know, let, let's talk. The bonus hour, it starts next on 107.5 WBLS. Thanks. We're this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS. Okay, so Charles's girlfriend of two years, Kim, is on the phone, and she wants to talk about the sex or, or something. She's on line number one, Goose. Hi, Kim. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So Charles is 30, and we talked. Did you actually hear it, or did somebody call you? No, I actually heard it, Wendy. I'm on my way home from work. Okay. He loves, okay. You. He loves you. I know he did wrong. What are you going to do? Well, listen, Wendy, he forgot to tell you something else. Oh, see, there's always more, you damn men. <laughs> what is it, Okay, girl? he cheated on me the first time, okay, which, you know, we went through our thing. Okay. I forgave him or whatever. Okay. And just recently, oh. I found out that he has been sending text messages to another female, and she's been returning, you know, sending text messages back to him. What are they saying? Well, can you get a... Because we live together, okay? Mm, yeah. So they've been saying, can you get away this weekend? I miss you. He's sending her a text message that I'll do anything for you. And he's giving me some, you know, BS you know story about they're just friends. Charles, you're a jerk. <laughs> Kim, why don't you leave him? You know, I don't know why, Wendy. Well, don't be don't lazy, Kim. You're 29 years old. You want to get married one day? Yes. You want to have children? Yes. You want to settle down? Yes. You know, men are men, and, you know, you dump one, you pick up another one's problems. Maybe they're not as bad as Charles. Maybe they're worse. <laughs> but, Kim, twice in two years, and th this is what you're dealing with? Imagine how he's going to be at another time in life. Or exactly. maybe maybe he won't be. Maybe he'll mature up. But, see, this is the thing, Wendy. He told Damn me Charles. he doesn't think that what he did was cheating. Yeah, No, you, 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 you had intention, Charles. It wouldn't have been so bad if you didn't physically cheat on Kim, two, you know, almost two years ago. But now you're text messaging? Exactly. Kim, and you're I too good for him. I know. And I don't know if anything had actually taken place. But, you know, mm -mm. I would rather, I would, you know, I forgave him for having sex with another woman. I would rather him go out and have sex with another another woman and not be emotionally then tied to another woman. Then carry on a text message. I hear you, Kim. We're you here. Know? We're here. I, I, I understand. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. I love you. I love your show. You are so great. Kim, can I just ask you something? Absolutely. So, so how frequent is the sex with you and Charles in 30 days for the month? Charles gets sex pretty much any time he wants it. Okay? He is not that deprived like he claims he is. Mm. Okay? The yeah. only thing he's deprived of is a professional. Yes. You know? Yes. But considering what has gone on in the past couple of weeks, I'm not putting my mouth on anything. Oh. <laughs> yes, well, you know, 
You know? Yes. So. Well, Kim, that's your situation. You're going to have to work it out. You know what? You're I right. Know. That skunk, didn't, he left out an important part of the equation, which is that yes. there's cheating going yes, on now. Did. I have been trying to call because I wanted to get, I wanted to get on the air and just give my side of the story. Oh, yeah, so thank you. I appreciate it. I love you so much. Keep up the good work with everything. Oh, thank you, Kim. Thank you, Wendy. Good luck with that rat, Carlos. Bye-bye. I mean, thank um, you. Um, Charles. Thank you. Which is actually Carlos in Spanish, and Carlos is on line number four. Uh, Carlos? Carlos was calling to remind us all that Paris is Burning is coming on Logo. I know. I watched hours of Logo over the weekend, darling. Ow. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's talk to Annette. She's got a foot fetish, and she's 40 plus. Line number two. Line number two. Annette. Yes. Wow, you enjoy men's feet. Excuse me? You enjoy men's feet? Well, actually, it's... (laughs) It's um how you doing? Situation where uh All wrong. I didn't realize that how important feet were to me. Oh yes. Listen, that that big toe can serve as a plug. <laughs> I mean if it's properly washed and cleaned and clipped. Oh. Wow. But I um I was in a marriage mm-hmm. and you know, I had a problem with these feet on this man from the beginning. Mm-hmm. But I thought to myself, you know, it seems awfully small-minded to be hung up on somebody's feet. Yes. And I got into a conversation with my sister, and I kept telling her, I can't get past these feet. And, what was uh, so terrible about them? Were they athletic feet? or, or Did he have bumps on them, scales? Wendy, you name it. You name it, these feet had it. Oh. And... <laughs> They didn't look like they belonged on a human being. Yes, I got you. But he must have been awfully cute and awfully nice because you went on and married him. He used in sp- a model professional. Okay, so in spite of the feet. So now, so now, what's your deal now? Because you said you're not married anymore and you're for, you're forty plus. Mm-hmm. 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 But uh, what was really funny was I my sister came for a visit, mm-hmm. and one morning he's strutting through the house, no slippers on. Oh, gosh. And she got a gander at these feet. Yes. <laughs> and she came running to me. Oh, God. All upset. And she's calling my name. Okay. I don't want to say it yes. on the air. We but she's calling it. my name. <laughs> and 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 Freak. I'm like, what's the matter? What's the matter? She said, you're all right. The feet. The feet. <laughs> <laughs> you stress because I, I heard you a couple of weeks ago mention the trip to Puerto Rico yes. and telling people about making sure the feet are right. Oh, and then I heard Steve Harvey a couple of weeks ago on in the morning uh, talking about the feet. Okay. People need to understand. Get your feet did. You know what? They should at least be presentable. Thank I you. I don't have the best feet, but they're presentable. Exactly. I don't care what they look like if you keep them worked on and keep them supple. And soft, yes. Because I don't want to look at feet that look like they may give me something. Yes, they rub yes, up the- yes. I understand. Point well taken. Thank you, Annette. You're welcome, Wendy. And we'll see you. You have grown on me. Oh. I wasn't sure about you in the beginning, but I love you, girl. I understand. Thank you, Annette. So we'll be seeing you in Puerto Rico? Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to make this trip, but I'll be there in spirit. Okay, Annette. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Line number three, uh, Raven wants to talk about the Randy Robinson experiment. How you doing? How you doing? All right. How you doing? (laughs) What's up, Randy? How you doing? (laughs) Who who was that that answered the phone? Um, Breathing, because he was breathing real heavy on the phone. Yeah. Who Who is that on the phone? I know you were talking about your interns, and you know. mm, Well, let me mm. see. That would be um, intern Jonathan. Is he straight? No. Did he sound straight? <laughs> yes, he did. He fooled me. How you doing, Jonathan? Well, actually, Jonathan informed me that he's uh, bisexual. Oh, he is? I'm what? looking over there to make sure that it's okay that I say. I, I asked them when they first started. Oh, okay. Well, let him know my name is Raven. and How he doing? <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I want yes. you to um, talk to you about um, workplace violence real quick. Okay. Um, I know... 
like, because I just watched the news and this chick in, in California, not to bring the mood down to the show, and I like the fire that you got lit under your set today, girl. Um, she killed, like, five of her employees and then turned the gun on herself. Yeah, it happened. She went postal. So what I want to say to people out there who is working with, like, crazy, weird people, watch yourself. Yeah. Really watch yourself. You Absolutely. Uh, well, we talk about it here. We we had somebody who, we brand the person the killer. He no longer works in this building. He moved when Air America moved to another <laughs> building. But he was the killer. You guys laugh, and I'm serious. And there's another killer here, too. And I'm going to write the name down, because when, when one killer serious? leaves, there's, oh, please, there's always somebody at the workplace that you don't put anything past. I'm just going to write the name down and show the fellas. I'm not going to say it on the air, because I don't want... And you him. say he left when Air, air America left? Yeah. Well, somebody that's in the building now? No, the, 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 the old killer used to work with Air America, so we kind of inherited him when they come... This is the killer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh please! All that, all that nicey nights and everything. Wendy, yeah, no. I love your energy today. You know I listen to you. Thank you, Raven. From two to seven, when you sign off at seven, when you sign on at two. Thank I you. I am here. Thank you. I am here. I am queer. I am going nowhere. Thank you, Raven. How you doing? All right. See you later, baby. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. So Coco wants to talk about Isaiah Thomas on line number seven. I am. I got to suffer through making sparrows and potato salad and just like a real negritty fest for my guys when I get home. And I really want to, I'm really sticking to LA weight loss and I know that I can have ribs, but I know like there's certain foods that you just can't eat just one and I'm not good at that. And, and I'll be in the kitchen just to taste it and, uh, you know, sop, 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 sop it up. So I'm going to have my salad and my lean cuisine and everything like that. I know it's going to be torture. I'm a little moody because of that. Hello? Hey, Wendy. Hi, Coco. Let's talk about Isaiah. Um, well, first thing um, first, this is Joy from Jersey, not that chick Joy from Brooklyn, oh. 25, with the 14-year-old. Well, I thought you were Coco from uh, from third, from New York. No, oh. but I still wanted to speak about um, Isaiah. Well, come on. But you, all, you need to give those chicks out there the doodle meatloaf um, recipe. And if she doesn't leave him... She needs to give him the doodle recipe from now on every Sunday. The doodle meatloaf has one third doodle. So now <clears throat> you choose the consistency based on what you've been eating. Girls, you know what to do from there. I don't need to tell you anything more. Oh, I thought you had some special seasoning also, you know. The no, well, lots of garlic to mask the flavor. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Of course. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Do it up, girl. Yes, and you know what? And it always helps to serve the doo-doo meatloaf with collard greens because they smell funky by nature. And so, you know, <laughs> and you just watch him eat his dinner. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, I think I think Isaiah sexually harassed that woman because she looked like a dude. See, people he were... He couldn't help himself. People were saying that. But, you know... <clears throat> she looked like a tranny. I... Gee... Hmm. Big, broad shoulders. That's me. Oh, that's me. No, I can't. Like I'm very sensitive to saying big girls look like trainees because that's I'm big. I got broad shoulders. Whatever. But you got the big boobs and the and the small waist and the big hair and the makeup. Mm -hmm. Look, look exactly like Rude and Paul, who's a man underneath all that. But well, RuPaul looked like a girl. That chick, she looked like a man. And he probably did try to get a good squeeze, good hug in there. Yeah. And was probably like reminiscing. Oh, man, like she's able to palm a basketball and stuff back when she was in college. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. Pat each other on the butt. Yeah. When yeah. they when they have meetings, she leans in on her on her knees like she's riding the bench. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And one more last question. Um, Steve Lindsay does your color? Yes. Okay. Is Steve Lindsay black or white? He's black. Oh, he is? He's black, he's gay, he's snobby, but he's very, very down to earth. Really? Yeah. Okay. He's over at Salon Santa Cruz. Yeah. Yeah, they resume business uh, tomorrow, like most... What's today, Tuesday? Today's my, Tuesday. Oh, he's working today. Yeah, make an appointment with him. You know, he, he is very good on color, on natural hair. Very good on giving advice on coloring of the weaves or doing the weaves. He's, he's so he can do low lights and highlights on black girl hair, then? Yes. Oh, okay. He, he's, he's well, thank welcome. you, Wendy. You're very welcome. Talk to you later. Take care, Joy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm -mm. Line number three, Josh wants to talk about Coretta Scott King. And hey. Josh. Hi, Josh. How are you, Wendy? Love you, girl. Josh, you sound so queenie. 
<laughs> Thank you. And you are so young. You're 15 years old. Oh, don't hate. I know. <laughs> no. Look, how do, how do the kids perceive you at school? Can you be all out like this? Because back would, in my day. Too. I'm like the most popular thing there because, you know, everyone attracts to me, okay? Yes, you have a beautiful personality so far. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember people of a certain age at times, like guys like like Josh, would have to painfully be like hidden in the cut until they graduated and got away from oh, the hell jerks? Oh, no, not me. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, well, what do you go to the Harvey Milk High School? Uh-uh, I own a prep in New Rochelle. Mm-hmm. Oh, I own a prep in New Rochelle. I know. Wow. <laughs> right, the rich white The rich white school, I know, my goodness. Well, That's where they all are. Well, so are you rich? Um, no, uh-uh, I'm black, okay, I got no dough, I have no money. So you got in there on the Splabuvian scholarship. <laughs> and they probably thought that you were less threatening than a block-hugging little Negro who happens to be smart from, from say, Brownsville. They don't want no trouble. They want exactly. Queenie exactly. Josh that you satisfies. Like this, you have, like, this flaky, uh, light-skinned brother, you know, who's yeah. all intelligent. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And you're non-threatening. Mm-mm. You are the key key of your class. Thank oh. you. Exactly. That's how I do. Okay? What? I walk down the hall. People always do a double take. I'm like, how you doing? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's always in the eyes. It's always in the eyes. Yes, and yes. <laughs> yes. Now, do you date within your high school? Oh, um, who? Yeah, okay. No, no, no. Wendy. Yeah. Wendy. You got some jobs. I'm, just say it again. Say my name again. Just say it again. No, you say my name. Wendy. <laughs> 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 All right, let's talk about Coretta Scott King, Josh. Okay, yes, died at the age of seventy-eight, and here's what. And this is what really got me upset. I go to school today, and I'm like, oh my god, brother. I'm like, brother, she died. I'm, they're like, who? Coretta Scott King. He's like, oh my god, are you serious? So um, I go to class, and I'm like, Coretta Scott King died. And they're like, who? And I'm like, have we gotten so comfortable up in this world that we don't even know who she is? I'm like, what? What? Uh-uh, I don't think so. If he delivered the message like this, then you understand why it is everybody's confused. I picture him standing in a Catholic schoolgirl skirt, okay. looking like Britney from Oops, I Did It Again, with his brother, brother, credit die, credit die. What? It's all in the delivery, Josh. <laughs> But I'm just like, even when I calm down, excuse. But, you know, we're all dropping like flies. I mean, you got Lou Rawls, okay, yes. with the brain and lung cancer. Yes. Uh, Richard Pryor, yes. okay, with the MS. Awesome. You got, uh, oh, goodness, you have credit. I mean, you have, A lot of um, people, Ossie Davis. Thank you. Shirley I mean, Chisholm. Lamont like, Bentley. No, between too two much soul food. <laughs> It's too much soul food. We all need a little L.A. weight loss, okay? Yeah, well, exactly. Mm-hmm. I guess. All right, take care, Josh. Love you, girl. Bye, honey. Love you. Boy. You know, um, between 2005 into this, um, just the beginnings of 2006, Bobby Short, Nipsey Russell, Johnny Cochran, Wilson Pickett the other day, Rosa Parks, and see Dolores Tucker. Rick James, McFadden and Whitehead just died. Uh, the 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 only living one just died the other day. Ah, uh, and we get comfortable because everybody is a little bit older. You know, it's easy to say. Well, everybody's lived a comfortable life. Luther Vandross. Luther All right, come on. Let's <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> is that why are you playing this? <laughs> I know, but it's supposed to stop, 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 stop. Okay. Let me see. Pam wants to talk about backstabbing friends on line number two. Hi, Pam. Hello. Hey Pam. How you doing, Wendy? Good. Pam is 37, everybody, and she's from New York. Hey, uh, guys on the phone, I love to know the boroughs. As opposed to just saying New York, I like to say, you know, Queens. Yes, it's Putnam, New York. All right. Nice to have you here, Pam. So what's going on, backstabbing friends? Um, Well, I've had the best friends for 20 years, Wendy. Mm -hmm. And um, I got married, um, had a daughter, had a son. She was my maid of honor. She's my children's godmother, everything. So she married my cousin a couple of years ago. She she had a couple of kids, and she just doesn't have time for me. She never calls me. I haven't seen her or the kids in six months. 
And when I was, you know, when I had my family, mm-hmm. she was always around, never, you know, told her she couldn't come over, anything. And now, I just want to know, should I just leave her alone are and you, give it up? Are you still married? I'm married still, okay. yeah. And, you know, there were some issues, Wendy. I was, you know, liking a party, I like partying for a while. And, yeah. You know, did some things I shouldn't have done. Well, I have he, a wonderful husband, two children. And he stuck by um, you while you got yourself together. Yeah. But, but here's the just, thing, Pam. You know, we've been together for 14 years. But here's the thing. Excuse me? Do you work? Yeah. And does I your work. friend work? Yes. My friend, she worked a couple of days in a um, salon. She owned a salon. I got to tell you something. Women who work and have that full family picture with the kids and stuff, each woman handles it differently. Right. For your friend, it might be a lot more stressful. For you, Pam, it was a little bit easier. I mean, you know, you you said yourself you like to party. Yeah, but I was a single mother when I had my daughter. Yeah, but it's still easier. Sometimes it's easier to call over your best friend than have to, you know, gather a dinner for, you know, some man. I just, you know, I I really don't know what to say. I don't want to see the relationship end. You've been friends for 20 years. You've come so far. Exactly. But maybe there needs to be a better understanding in terms of how each of you handles the stresses of working and being mothers and like that. And with her, not for nothing, she does one more thing that you and I don't know. And that is she owns her salon. She's got to account for every employee and every nickel and dime. She's got to, I mean, she, as an owner, she's got responsibilities that I don't even want But she's not even doing it anymore. She owned it. She sold it. Then she worked her for a while, two days a week. I work three days a week. I just feel like she's, um, you know, putting me out of her life. She doesn't call me. I can never come over. You know, when she she tells me, well, I don't like what you did. But nothing I ever did was toward her. And I was in the hospital with cancer. She never called. Oh, wait, she never came to visit. You're saying I so mean, much more. Wow, wow. Well, yeah, then I mean, it's, time more, for, it's more than just having a friend. I mean, she was my sister. Okay. You know, my sister, uh, we live five minutes away from each other. Okay. And I haven't seen her in six months. Okay, this is what you do. You get you get a couple babysitters or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, you girls go out and have a nice midday lunch someplace, and I mean a place where you can sit and talk. I'm not talking about like in a restaurant, but in a loungy mm-hmm. part of a hotel. I love that mm-hmm. kind of lunch. Yeah. And you guys need to talk, and nobody's going anywhere until you hash out whether you're still friends. You're going to work she on already it, did or what? All right, was it over or not? She just said she doesn't like what I did. Okay, then, it, then it's over. Then it's over. And the, the you know, no excuses. Always, it's over. You know, no resentment, no pain. I'm proud of you. You know, you've been through a lot and you've come back and you're okay. doing well. It's Your over, Pam. Healthy, you know. Pam, she, yeah, she doesn't want it. You're 37. You know, you, you know what friendships are. Friendships exactly. are often transitional in our lives. Right, right. You got your own kids, your own sobriety, and your own household and well-being to worry about. You cannot chase right. after um, somebody who does not want to be your friend. You've exactly. tried the lunch thing. You've tried. So it's over then. Stop right. stop begging for friendship. You're old enough to be your own best friend, A. All right, Wendy. And, and you're also old enough to be your own best sounding board. And you're also right. old enough to realize that there right. are more important people in your life that need this kind of emotional um, stress that you're going through. Right. That's exactly. your well, I do have a lot of stress. My sister's dying from cancer, lives oh, with me. And my 18-year-old is, you know, being an 18-year-old. It's so over. It's over stresses. with her then. Yeah, you concentrate on your own life, Pam. you got to be strong yeah. for so, so many people. Okay. I wish you... you, you, you gotta, you got to be strong for so many people. I wish you well, I Pam. know. I know. Right. And three dogs. Yeah, yeah, too much. <sighs> yeah. Too All much. right, Wendy. Well, thank you so much, girl. And uh, keep it live. I love you. I listen to you every day. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. My husband does as well, so don't say too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, Wendy. Thank you, Pam. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. <clears throat> uh oh, there's something racial popping off at Dana's job. She's thirty three. She's on line number five. Oh boy. Hello. Hi, Dana. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing fine. What's going on there in Jersey City? Listen, today is my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. So you just turned 33 today? Yes, 33 today. Mm-hmm. Let me give a quick shout out. Jackie Reed's birthday is also, also today. So happy yes, birthday, happy birthday, Jackie. Jackie. <laughs> Wendy, I had an experience at work today that kind of annoyed me, and I wasn't sure um, of my take on it. Okay. So I'm... Um, doing some consultant work at this firm and one of the directors was speaking to my supervisor and he made reference to tonight's State of the Union address where someone is a previous head of the KKK. Uh But the way that he posed it was like like he was just out in the open with it. Like, oh yeah, he was the head of the KKK. Like, he approved of that and I was offended. 
So I got Mm-mm. up on my desk. I wouldn't and I walked be. Away. Uh, I don't know that you need to be. A, well, go ahead, finish the story. Just because he's knowledgeable about you know where the hate comes from. Yeah, but I don't know. Was I he... got a bad aura, and being that this is a consultant job, mm. I'm like, is this really the kind of mix that I need to be up in? Because mm. I was very aggravated. Okay, go ahead and finish the story, because maybe there's more to it that we can pull from. Well, after he made the comment, he rushed away because there's three other African-American women around him. Mm-hmm. So he saw all of our heads jumped up and looked at him like, why would you... First of all, the statement shouldn't have come out of your mouth. Right. And if it did come out of your mouth, it didn't have to be heard across the whole office. Right. It's a very open space. They're all in cubicles, but it's very open. Mm. So certain things, of course, to be knowledgeable about, and I guess also because today we lost the Pioneer. Right. You know, I was very offended. How and come, I was like, how come you didn't I had say- to get up and walk away before I said something that maybe would have caused me to not be asked back tomorrow. Oh, at 33, you know how to hold your head. You know how to hold your head. But why didn't you say something then? Because, see, you could go back tomorrow and ask him. But sometimes there are opportunities that are just missed if you don't seize the moment. Whether it's that cute guy in the produce or a comment from your boss or, you know, that fleeting moment. Well, you know what? I probably would not at this point say anything to him tomorrow, of yes, course, because uh, yeah, it's right, done and over with. Right. But I will look at him with a crooked eye from this day forward. I, it's not a person that I would even want to really, you know, yeah. talk to. Well, I mean, there there are Klansmen all over, I know, our state of New Jersey that we just don't even know about, and they still have those meetings and the whole bit. So if it, if, if it, if it um, you know, makes you feel any better, he's not alone. Which, oh, which that makes you I feel know. worse. He will not be the last Klansman if, if he's down with that that you run into. And from now on, you'll be more prepared with con- with comments like that. You'll be ready to come back. And you're not going to say anything stupid or ignorant that's going to get right. you hauled off in cuffs or fired. Because you know why? Because you don't sound like an erratic, crazy woman. You sound no. like a sensible 33-year-old woman who will correctly articulate what you're thinking and will correctly get the answer. I wish you well and thank you for calling. Thanks, Wendy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. So, uh, dear Wendy, I withheld sex from my husband, but he sealed his fate on that. Last year on our third anniversary, a woman made a pass at our store as I stood there not more than three feet away from them. He made, she made the pass to my husband, and he made a continuing flirting gesture back. I would have walked out on him on that day, but... It, I need to stay for the money that went into the business. <laughs> a smarter woman would have been prepared for whatever, including we'll take we'll just divide this business up right the hell now. You're sitting withholding sex. That's doing you no good. You know what that's giving you? Wrinkles and gray hair because of the stress, the anger that you're forced to project around the house. You ever walk around forcibly being mad at people? That's how people bust out in those hug it out laughs. You ever look at somebody you're just so damn mad that you end up laughing like, damn it, I can't, can't be mad. <laughs> damn you. Um, you know what? You're thinking you're hurting him. But you're hurting yourself more. Because if you're talking about this is your husband, then chances are, like a lot of women in the marriage, the onus of uh, of the majority of the child's care is on you. So now you're taking care of yourself. You're taking care of the kids. He's getting sex regardless. Okay? He's getting, and I'm not talking about from his hand, that as well as a live woman. What you're doing is you're aiding and abetting a straight up cheater and letting him know that you are no good without him. You're feeding right into him. What you need to do is file for divorce, take half the business, still have the guts to work up in there every damn day, looking better than the day before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she says, I would have walked out then if it was my money that went into the business. Oh, I see. My money that went into the business. Oh, well, well that'll learn you. I understand the whole third wedding anniversary and stuff, and he was clearly dead wrong, but, you know, now you're the one who's wearing that stress, not him. He's still getting his sex. Emails. Oh, these are my emails? Wow, look how they've piled up. I'm taking these wow. home. I'm reading these right before the Gastineau girls. <laughs> I'm watching that, John. That's what they say in Philly, John. All right, um, we need to go into a break, you guys. 
literally while this break is going on, I'm going to pack up my headphones. I'm going to do the last break with no um, headphones, no nothing. And I'm going to put my coat on so that when I say goodbye, I'm literally walking to the elevator. So now I'm going to go get prepped. And we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with the remainder of the bonus hour of the Wendy Williams Experience next on 107.5 WBLS. 107.5 WBLS remembers Coretta Scott King. When they bombed Dr. King's house, they were bombing Coretta's home. And she would pick up the pieces and take care of the children. And then when he was killed, it was Coretta that stepped forward and kept the movement going and led the drive for his federal holiday at Bill and King Center for him and taught a new generation civil rights. Keeping the dream alive. 107.5 WBLS. Hey, what's up? This is Corinne Steffens, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. For one of them, um, if you mm-hmm. could say, like, you know, can I say with AKA, you know, super Nope, I don't use it. Nope. Okay, or you could say, like, the name of your book or whatever. Okay. Okay. So I'll do, I'll do it on this first one and, and put in my name and, and the book okay. name. Yeah. Hey, what's up? This is Corinne Steffens, author of the book Confessions of a Video Vixen. And you're listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Did you hear her playing it like, I don't use the superhead name? Please. I don't, nope, I don't use it. Yo, the word in the street is that Jimmy Henchman was found guilty of pummeling that um, second degree assault with the DJ Zulu thing. My radio brethren, remember it happened like last January and Game was on radio tour. <clears throat> Zulu, who <clears throat> I don't know personally, but, you know, you, you know, as, as radio personalities go, we are in this little box and we are trapped. And, you know, when I've worked and and. And heard lots of stories about, like, you know, people coming up to radio stations, the celebrities, coming up to radio stations and just turning absolutely block in the studio. And then you're, like, trapped. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, what the hell do you do? You know. So, Zulu apparently said something to the effect of, welcome my Vulcan brother to either Game or Jimmy Hanchman or somebody in the entourage. He said Vulcan meaning, you know, those earpieces that you use on your ears. But you just never know how you're going to set somebody off. You know, so apparently set off the whole click. Zulu's got this multi-million dollar lawsuit and now Jimmy Henchman's facing 10 years in prison. Oh, Henchman, you know the telephone number to the studio. What the hell is going on? I could, we can do this today or tomorrow. And Zulu, we need more to the story. Oh, what the hell? You gotta be kidding me. All the good that has happened in Henchman's click, and he might be going down for a welcome, my Vulcan brother. Wow, man. This hour of the show wow. is brought to you by something new. That's the new Sanaa Latham play. Um, I want to talk to you about another St. Ives product. I'm a spokesperson. My garage is full of St. Ives. I'll be giving it for every holiday of 2006. <laughs> but everybody that I know loves St. Ives, so they love it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it's soon as the guests come in the pink room, the first thing that the interns are instructed to say, lotion? <laughs> Just squirt everybody up. No excuse for hard hands. St. Ives is on our team. They also are proud sponsors of the U.S. ski team and the snowboard team. I love St. Ives products. When they approach me about, you know, um, you know, endorsing St. Ives, I said, yes. I buy their stuff. I buy their stuff at Target. I use the facial scrubs. I know this is, we're talking about moisturizers here, but they have a bunch of products and they're affordable. I've been using St. Ives since college. You know, when you have to figure out what's good, what's going to work and what's, you know, what's going to be cost effective, St. Ives. And now here I am older. I could do better, but why? It works. It's great. I don't think that's how they wanted me to do the commercial. So let me just get back on the script. They've got a product called Collagen Elastin Moisturizer. You know what the collagen in. That's the stuff that keeps your skin nice and youthful. The collagen and moisture, youthful and supple. It's not too late to experience St. Ives Collagen Elastin. It's, it's right there at the store. The mall closes at 9 o'clock. The store is open all night. St. Ives. 
Oh, that might be Jimmy Henchman. I mean, I just want to know. I'm not trying to get all up in anybody's business or anything, but I'm just trying to see. Jimmy, are you going down? Are you going down for a radio interview? Ten years, yo. Game is sure to find a new manager in that time. <laughs> I have something to give away. Oh, darn. I'll do it after I talk to the people on the phone, though. Let, let's go to line number four. Edmundo wants to talk about an Albie Shore sighting. You've got to be kidding me, Edmundo. Oh, yeah. Where? Uh, he's down in the Hamptons in Virginia. Oh. Uh, 105.3 KISS FM is a new station down there. What does he do, and, like a quiet storm show? Yeah, he does a quiet storm yeah. from uh, from 10 to, like, 3 in the morning. Oh, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, this is... This, this is, is Wendy? Yeah. This is hey, like... girl, what's up? Hey. hey I listen, I went to that Taj Mahal <clears throat> thing with Bobby Brown. Yes. You look so fabulous. I went to the after party, but you know what, though? What? People were complaining. You stupid. Spend some money. You only live once. You know what I'm saying? The party was fabulous. Yeah. I had a good time at the party, too. I'm glad that you were there. And Edmundo, you know, this is Albie Shore's either second or third radio job. He was Oh, yeah. He's Coast doing real Station. good. He's good. The ratings are, are fabulous. He, you know, I had met him once before, and he actually he actually tapped me on the shoulder. I saw him up in Mount Vernon. That's where he's originally from. Right. And uh, he was very nice. Very, I mean, the only nice. black eye on his entire thing is that Puffy's son is calling him daddy. Oh, yeah. I yeah, mean, you, know, about that. you know, that that's just terrible. But, you know, it's nice to see that there was life after singing for Albie Shore. Oh, Thank absolutely. you so much for calling. Well, he had all the connections with Quincy Jones. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. So, you know, he should be a multimillionaire. You well, know, and his, son, and his son shouldn't be uh, financially, you know, with the next man. But, uh Things exactly. happen. Oh, you know what? Uh, hey, Wendy, I want to tell you something. Yes, I'm I know you got a little Bayesian in you, right? Yes. Listen, always remember one thing, because I always hear you, and I've been following you for a long time. You're a dynamite girl. You are so together. You're really, really nice. And I'll tell you, I got myself pretty much together, too, because uh, I'm in the law enforcement field, and, um, you know, pretty much as far as the pockets, I'm straight. But um, okay. besides that, um, On the tape. always remember one thing. <laughs> like me, I'm, I'm Spanish, but I'm a black Spanish. Always remember... The Caribbean guys, like your your family's Bayesian. Yeah. All those places from Puerto Rico, Panama, Costa Rica. They don't circumcise. Those are black people. Those are black oh. people for Spanish speaking. So if a girl from North Carolina goes with a guy, let's say from Costa Rica, she's only going with the same type of person. Oh, I know. It's just a lot of people from there don't recognize their black heritage yes. when they should embrace it because, oh, well, you know, that might be your cousin. You know, slavery. Exactly. Is, so always remember when a, 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 a black girl, with, let's say a Spanish guy, yes. or vice versa, they're just as black as we are. And you Bayesian, so you know, you're part of that Central America affair also. Yes, yes. Always remember, because there's a whole lot of guys like out here that are like me, that are black Spanish. I'm black with first, extra I'm skin. Spanish second. You understand? On the take. There's a whole lot of us. we got a whole lot of us out here like that. <laughs> Thanks, Edmundo. Okay, Love baby. you for Listen, listening. I'm going to your next party, baby. Oh, that, that would be important. And I hope you and your husband and your son prosper. I want to see you a billionaire in five years. Oh, okay? please! That wouldn't that be lovely? Thank oh, you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it, that, baby. We want you to do it. I'm that, gonna go to all your parties. Oh well, you know. I'm coming, spending, baby. I like Cristal, and I like my. We don't drink Cabot Cristal today, anymore. You know? We drink George Vaselli champagne. Oh, excuse me. That's my champagne. <laughs> Listen, keep on doing good, baby. Hey, Edmundo. Um, thank you for listening. God bless you, Take sweetheart, care, and may you have success. And listen, get Virginia. You know, people in Virginia know about you. Tell them to hook you up with Virginia, listen, the Hampton area, Newport News. I can tell. Uh, I can Virginia talk. Beach. It's, it's, a bigger, it's a bigger process than me. Just It's it's a process. It's a business. Well, how do we go about pushing it for you? How about the audience pushing it You guys it have been more than gracious. Trust and believe. You gotta get Virginia. There are a bunch of stiffs in now. suits, and I've Virginia. always got to wait for them to move. Yeah, Always. You got, a, you got a big following down there. You got a big... I mentioned to I'll be sure about you. I told him how good you was doing. And what he Just say? Just to put it in his ear. You know what I mean? And what he say? Oh, he was happy for you. Oh, okay. You Thanks, Al. He was happy all right, for you. All right. I got it. The Monday I have to go. God bless. You. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Always the men in the suits. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're not in the streets. They don't see what's going on. They, you know, you, you just, mm. well, the story of my life, it keeps me humble. Let's go to line number two. Mr. B is in Yonkers. You want to talk about boobs? Hello. B Hi, B. That child was just talking. 
I know. Hey, Wendy, this is Wendy. Hey. I mean, Kuk, wait, no. This is Mr. B. Oh. Cool, cool. Don't play with me. Huh? Listen, that's how I was just talking. Girl, he made me fall asleep, girl. Anyway, Wendy, this is Mr. Bimbo. I changed my name. It's no more Bimbo. It's Mr. Bimbo. Hi, Bimbo. I was going to call you yesterday, Wendy, but you was treating your callers like the Jehovah Witness girl. You were scared to talk to us, girl. But it's wrong. Then what? Wait, was I like that yesterday? Yeah, she was like, I scared this hoe. Who pick up this phone? That's the way we treat the job. But oh, witness, girl, we look through that hole and we look and we not answer the door, girl. You was doing that to us yesterday. They don't treat us like that, girl. Oh, we damn. We don't want to talk about the Bible. I'm sorry. Anyway, Wendy, uh-huh. I changed my name because 2006 Bimbo is doing big things, girl. Okay. I'm gonna have my own apartment because my mother's about to kick me out. Okay. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in school for communications trust. I'm gonna be interning for you. Did I say that right? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Interning for you, Wendy, and I'm gonna be a stripper, Wendy. I know what you say about strippers, but you can put that where. Back there, girl, okay? Because you couldn't do it. I'm gonna do it, girl. I got a body on me. All right. Okay. All right, girl. Well, good luck. I want to say that I got jumped a week ago. Oh, Bimbo, what happened? After the club, these boys, they jumped. I, you know what? I, it's over. I, I, after the fight, Wendy, I was ready to walk the runway. Let me tell people who <laughs> talk to jump people, when you jump somebody, you got to make sure that they get up, that they go home in an ambulance. You don't jump nobody and they walk up looking like Naomi Campbell or Tyra. I was ready to walk, girl. They didn't do They just hit me over the head with a snapple bottle. Girl, I got a big old look on my head. Uh, don't, girl. Play with me, girl. Um, and they pulled my friend by the head because he got long hair like Foxy. And they dragged him to the floor. He was like, me, help me, So I, I cracked the snapple bottle. I said, get off my friend. And Wendy, that's not my style. I don't like to fight. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Bimbo. I, no, girl, I like to talk about people, but I know how to run, girl. You know what I'm saying? Yes! You know, I got my mace now, so if they want it, bring it. I got my mace. But I'm not going to go look for a fight with you. That's not my style, because I do want to live a life. You know, and I don't want to be in jail 10 years just for, you know what I'm saying, Wendy? Yes. And one more thing, girl. Um, I want a threesome. Oh, you've got too many goals for 2006. First, concentrate on moving out of your mother's house. Bimbo, have a lovely night. Thank you for calling. No, can I just say to two people, Wendy? Who? Oh. Remy Martin and Joel Santana. Girl, I want them two, girl. Oh, wow. Ooh, Remy, eating my booty and just do all. Oh, girl. And I heard from what I hear, Joel. All right, I gotta girl. go. Good Goodbye, Bimbo. Goodbye, Bimbo. 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 Renee in Hempstead says, tell Edmundo that Barbados is not in Central America. It's in the Caribbean, the West Indies. Ah, you all. Stop fighting with one another. You know what? We need to have some drinks in here tomorrow. Or something. The sun first needs to come out tomorrow. Because this spring weather with the rain is not cutting it. I don't know what you call that out there. Who wants to win something? I got um, a girlfriend's gift pack featuring tickets to something new. That's the Focus fi- That's Focus Features, Sanilate the Movie. Plus, you're going to get a copy of The Queens of Comedy. And um, the novel called Changes... Excuse me. Yes, Changes Faces. Not changing. It's, it's Changes Faces here. Uh, and the best kept... Faces. That those are two novels by Kimberla Lawson Roby. We like her here on the show. So you're going to win a girlfriend's package. And by the way, uh, for the movie, you can take you and then two of your girlfriends. So the three of you be doing it for yourselves, girl. You call right now. Pick that up. <clears throat> yeah, you go to the movies free. My kid is bugging me about seeing Curious George. I think we're going to have to go see that this weekend. Mama! Yes. What is it? <laughs> I really do think it's almost time to go. I, everybody's going to be calling to win, and I don't want to get caught up in that. Puffy's got a big splashy thing going on All Star Weekend and then Super Bowl Weekend. Everybody's going to be every place. I'm going out. I'm coming back to um, Detroit <sighs> for my own Super Bowl party. It's not really mine. It's Rezo's actually. And question mark entertainment. A lot of you all have asked me about the Super Bowl party on Sunday in Belleville, New Jersey. Go to Rayzo.com. R-A-Y-Z-O.com. This is one of those sexy Super Bowl parties. Now, I said sexy yesterday and the girl said, what, we got to dress up? 
No, she didn't deliver it like that, actually. She was, you know, what do we have to dress up, Wendy? You know, and she said it like sucking your tongue. I said, no. I'll be wearing juicy, velour, or some sort of, you know, nice presentable sweatsuit. Loungewear. Loungewear. Like you're in the house, exactly, and some friends have come over to your house, and you're drinking and you're eating with your fingers. Yeah, sucking, exactly. Well, I'm wearing loungewear to the Super Bowl party, you guys. Excuse me? You're going to go to a tight Super Bowl party where you got to wear something like what you have on? A button-up shirt with the, with the pockets? See, that's stiff. That is stiff to me for Super Bowl Sunday. For Super Bowl Sunday, that's stiff. I like to see the guys. You know one of my favorite outfits for, um, for casual wear, if a guy can really pull it off without looking gay? I love a man in a thermal that just grazes, not hugs like Mike Woods. I'm not saying anything, Woods, but you wear hug clothes. But that's because you can. You got that body. But it's very Ricky Martin-ish, and it, you know, everybody looks at you like, hey. And, you know, I, I like it to graze the area. Yes. And some jeans, the darker wash. Yes, and if the thermal is off-white, I like the regular gold Tims. You don't got to go special and souped up with the Prada, whatever the hell. We're going to a damn Super Bowl party. Yeah. Whew. Oh, my God. Or flip the jeans, make the jeans a little lighter, and then the thermal black, and then the black work. Oh, what? Mm. That's what this area right here was meant for on a man. Th oh, right this here. pocket right here, you just lay up in that. Right here, guys, you got to work on that right here. That is the un oh, <laughs> oh Trevor. <laughs> but right here, the underarm, you know, that where you rest your head. Oh, oh my gosh. No, you're not 80 pounds. Oh, do you want to come to my Super Bowl party? You drive, come out to Jersey. Whole new yeah, flock gonna, of women. Oh, good. Yeah, you could dress more like Goose. <laughs> okay, okay. You're going to really come to the party, aren't you? Yeah, I was planning on it. Good. Listen, it's a really nice crowd of men and women. A really nice crowd. I don't care about the men. It's a mixture of the... Well, I'm just talking to the women. It's a mixture of the block that knows how to act. A mixture of the boardroom that definitely knows how to act, is making their money, got their life insurance, got their living will, and are paying their bills. Kids might go to private school. Kids might go to public school. The point is they got a damn babysitter that night. And we're in there. Ew, jeans, velo whatever. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's looking and judging. People are drinking, eating, and having fun. Hey. It's a nice vibe. Razo throws the party. Isn't that a cute name? Razo. It's Ray Zariah. They're married. Yeah, Razo. Couples be doing for themselves. <laughs> and question mark entertainment. But, it, but it's the same Super Bowl party I go to every year. You know me, I don't even get into sports. How is it that every year I'm being dragged away from the party like, I don't want to go? <laughs> you know, I have fun. I don't feel the pressure to even care about what the hell is going on for a halftime commercial. But they play all the games and stuff. People get, like, really into it. It's nice to see. Because a lot of the girls are, like, intern chi -chi. Girls get into sports these days. I'm just not one of them. You know, I got other things going on. That was a good tactic, though. I wish I thought about that, like, when I was a single woman. Because a lot of the girls, they get into knowing about the sports so that they have conversation with the guys. So you don't have to look like the true chicken head on the side of the door at the exactly. garden. Instead, you... you yeah, instead you meet them on the same heady level, which is a great strategy. Yeah, that's a great strategy. Oh, we got a winner for the um, passes. Shayna. Oh, Shauna Tessenholtz. She lives in uh, Bayside. Congratulations, Sh Shauna. And uh, enjoy yourself at the movie and whatnot. And thank you for listening. You guys, my ribs have been marinating since 6 o'clock this morning. Do you know I use that rub? The old black man's on the front of the rub. He looks like a runaway slave. But I swear that rub is good. <laughs> it's beige with white. Uncle Brown or something like that. I got the, the rub. 
Damn, damn, damn. I gotta go home. <clears throat> Three kinds of potatoes in the potato salad, including a sweet potato. That's the key. You gotta put a sweet potato in there. Just, just to infuse a little bit. And Miracle Whip. You gotta, you gotta stick it down. Yeah. I'm not complaining, but I'll be having lean cuisine. And <laughs> anyway, I gotta go. You all have been a lovely audience. I hope you've been thoroughly entertained today. And, um, you know, I apologize for, you know, some of the snippiness. I don't do it on purpose, but we're all human, right? Okay. All right. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, too. God willing. Vaughn Harper's up next with The Quiet Storm. Oh, don't forget, if you if you can, can you please go by, by my website before to, between now and before tomorrow at 2 o'clock and answer the people poll question. Actually, I think Taryn changes it like 10 o'clock in the morning. Do you think Isaiah Thomas... Sexually harass that woman. Yes or no? And you can go to the Wendy Williams Experience.com. Okay, don't forget to start your day with the Steve Harvey Morning Show and another trip to Puerto Rico tomorrow morning, bright and early on 107.5 WBLS. Bye bye. Uh, <laughs> bye, I said. Please. <laughs> As I was walking away, a cool breeze lifted up my skirt. You just saw all my business. <laughs> bye, bees. Bye. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh man! And WBLS music starts next. 107.5 WBLS remembers Coretta Scott King. Coretta Scott King was certainly a phenomenal woman. She clearly was the first lady of the human rights struggle. One must remember she gave up her career as one that was studying to be an opera singer. When she met Dr. King in Boston, when he was attending Boston University, and she was in a conservatory, and went back to her native south in Alabama and helped him to start the movement. Keeping the dream alive. 107.5 WBLS. Here's what's happening at 107.5 WBLS. Celebrating 35 years of service and connecting with our community. Listen to 107.5 WBLS to pick up a girlfriend gift pack featuring tickets to see something new with Sanaa Lathan in theaters this Friday, a copy of the outrageous Queens of Comedy DVD, and Kimberla Lawson Roby's new hardcover Changing Faces, along with a copy of her new paperback, The Best Kept Secret. Both available now wherever books are sold. Plus the latest CD from Heather Head in stores January 31st and qualify for a night out on the town with your girls. BLS. Log on to WBLS.com to find out how to take the frightening to the fabulous living room makeover challenge. Pick up an iRobot Roomba Shoydla vacuum and qualify for a complete living room makeover courtesy of Stephanie Cohen and 107.5 WBLS. Celebrating 35 years of service and connecting with